Hi, my fellow YouTubians. Um, uh, I have had some uploading trouble today. Um, I wanted to upload a nine minute video, but my computer said it would take 786 minutes to upload. So I was like, no, thank you. I'll do it some other time. Um, because I have a wireless connection, it's, it's slower than a DSL line, but still, that's, that's a long time. That's a really long time to wait around for a video to upload. Um, and plus, I just banged my head a few minutes ago uh, on the uh, shelf in the pantry in my kitchen. Uh, so because I'm not in the greatest of moods today, I thought it would be a good time to talk about the 10 worst movies that I've ever seen. Um, and believe me, it's not easy to get all those bad movies down to a list of just 10, but I think I've got the essentials here. Number 10, Devil's Advocate, uh, which is a movie with Keanu Reeves. He plays a lawyer. He gets recruited to work at a Manhattan law firm run by Al Pacino. Now, as it turns out, Al Pacino is not only Satan, but he's also Keanu Reeves' father. <laughs> Despite the fact that this is all very dumb, the very worst part of this movie is the fact that Keanu Reeves plays a lawyer. A lawyer who speaks with a southern accent. You know, we have to make a, a statement. You know, something, ah, oh man, terrible, terrible movie, really bad. Um, 1997 was an awesome year for bad movies. The Postman came out that year. Batman and Robin came out that year. Speed 2 Cruise Control came out that year. Yeah, and, and a bunch of others. That one was one of the worst, though. Um, my, my next on my list is Michael. Michael is a movie that came out in 1996 uh, by Nora Ephron, who did Sleep Us in Seattle. Now, I got to imagine that uh, the studio executive who approved this project went, Nora Ephron, director. Ah, you've got John Travolta, William Hurt, and Annie McDonald in your cast. That sounds like a good movie. Why don't you go ahead and make that? And didn't read the script. <laughs> because the movie is about... Uh, the John Travolta plays Michael, the Archangel Michael, okay? And he is discovered by William Hurt and Annie McDowell, who write for a tabloid magazine. And so they go to the town where he's living to meet him and write a story about him. So what happens then? Nothing! Nothing happens at all, okay? They go on a road trip to see tourist attractions. And Michael, uh, and Michael basically just eats a bunch of sugar, lots of sugar, and he flirts with a lot of ladies and dances. And then at the end of the movie, he dies for no reason at all. And then Annie McDowell and William Hurt, they go to their editor, and they're like, we're not going to tell him that Michael was a real angel, are we? No, 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 okay. No, he wasn't a real angel. The wings were fake. Let's work on something else. There is no point to this movie at all. Nothing happens in this. I can't believe they wasted all that time and money on that movie in which nothing happens. Next on my list is Halloween. Uh, the remake of Halloween in 2007. Rob Zombie um, directed a remake of the John Carpenter film. And first of all, this is a very bad idea in and of itself. Despite the fact that the movie is badly shot, way overacted, and just plain ugly, <laughs> it is a remake of Halloween, one of the most seminal horror movies ever to come out, okay? It is, it is such a, 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 a game changer. It is such a, 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 a genre-defining... Uh, movie it's like it's like remaking the wizard of oz or gone with the wind or 2001 or or even forrest gump or something like that okay you don't do a remake of some movies they they just you, you, they, they stand alone they stand apart they are works of art in and of themselves so yeah what big thumbs down for that next on my list is mission impossible 2 which came out in 2000 about a year after eyes wide shut Tom Cruise, of course, plays Ethan Hunt again. Uh, Big Rains is a sidekick again. It's directed by John Woo. Now, despite the fact that this movie has a very stupid story, it does have a couple of good points. First of all, Big Rains, he's great. Second of all, the scenes where they pull their masks off. The effects on those are really awesome. I love that stuff. I mean, at, at, at 2000, I was just blown away by how great those effects were. But the story is really stupid. There is no chemistry between Tom Cruise and the lead actress. You know, they're supposed to have a romance. They're supposed to have feelings for each other. They look in each other's eyes and there's nothing there. There's just nothing there. There's nothing going on. And then there's the big chase at the end where they're driving around a motorcycle shooting at each other. Their faces are completely blank. They're not even like, there's not the slightest bit of tension in their expression. They're just blank faces. Boom, boom, boom. <clears throat> boom, boom, boom. <sighs> Terrible. You know, John Woo's known for his action movies and, and that's not one of the better ones. Oh, and get this. On the DVD, the stunt guys insist that Tom Cruise did all his own stunts himself. That he rode through a wall of fire on a motorcycle without facial protection himself. That is BS. That is total BS. There is no way that he did that. No freaking way. Okay? And those kinds of lies are just make me hate the movie more. Um, next on my list, also from 1997, is Air Force One. That's a uh, thriller where um, Harrison Ford plays the President of the United States, and he's on his jet traveling from Russia to America, and a Russian uh, TV crew 
turn out to be hijackers and they pull out machine guns with the help of a rogue secret service agent and they take over the plane and they demand that their leader be freed or else they will kill the president and his family. Okay. Now, Harrison Ford escapes and he runs around the plane trying to shoot the other terrorists and trying to save his family. And he picks up a cell phone and he calls the White House, all right? From baggage handling. Cell phones do not work on planes 30,000 feet in the air, okay? <laughs> it just doesn't work, okay? So stupid, right? Okay, and get this. I don't think I'm giving anything away to say that eventually Harrison Ford manages to kill all the terrorists, including Gary Oldman, the leader, and take back control of the plane, okay? <laughs> and save his family. But when that happens, the rogue secret air service agent, the one that helped the hijackers, hadn't been found out yet. Now, they could have let that go and saved them for the sequel, right? But no, the movie goes on for another 20 minutes and a whole series of incredibly contrived events just to put themselves in a position where they find out who the guy is anyway and dispatch him before the movie is over. Oh, and the special effects are really bad too. I mean, especially at the end because the, the plane's flying around at night for most of the movie, but by the time the end comes, it's daylight out and it looks just looks really bad. Terrible, terrible movie. Uh, then there's Hotel. Hotel is a movie that uh, is kind of low budget. It isn't, a, um, it isn't a big studio picture. It was done with digital cameras, an ensemble cast. The director's fairly big, Mike Figgis. He did uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Um, but uh, he did a movie called Time Code the year earlier, uh, which I liked quite a bit. It, it was done in a similar way. Hotel is, is also an ensemble movie that was done with digital cameras, but the choices that he made on this are really dumb. The, 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 uh, the whole storyline just doesn't make any sense. It's boring. There isn't anything interesting happening in it. And the worst part is, is that some of the things that they do within the scenes themselves are just ridiculous. You've got two characters, who are, weren't, one of whom wasn't aware that the other one was around. They meet, okay? And instead of saying, hello, good to see you. I didn't know that you were here. They start growling at each other like pit bulls. They start going, <laughs> Who thought this would be a good idea for these guys to do that? What does that even mean? Why are they doing this? It doesn't make any sense at all. It's stupid. It's just stupid. Um, next on my list is Blue Steel. Blue Steel came out in 1990. It's directed by the now Academy Award winning director Catherine Bigelow. Jamie Lee Curtis plays a cop. Ron Silver plays this businessman who she has this relationship with. But as it turns out, he's a psycho and he wants her to kill him. He goes around shooting her friends, you know, threatening her family members, killing innocent people because he wants her to kill him because he's a psycho. He's just, he's just messed up in the head, okay? Now that's not the problem with this movie. The problem in the movie is the music goes throughout the entire movie, okay? And half the movie is slow motion shots where people go boom, you know, and just over, you know, the, the style is just so... It's just dumb. It's just a lot of dumb choices there as far as the execution of the idea. Really, really dumb movie. Next on my list is The Rookie. The Rookie is a movie that Clint Eastwood directed and co-stars him and Charlie Sheen as a couple of cops. They don't get along. They're, they're very different from each other. They don't get along, so they argue, you know, big deal, right? Then Clint Eastwood gets kidnapped and Charlie Sheen has to, like, figure out where he is and save him, okay? This movie is just plain ugly, okay? It's sadistic. It's way too violent. It's just badly shot. It's just ugly. And it just seems like they, nobody cared about the movie at all. Um, there's a scene where Charlie Sheen rides a motorcycle into his girlfriend's house because she's being attacked. There is no way that he could know where she was in the house and that he wouldn't run over her as well. And while he's trying to find Clint Eastwood, he goes to a bar. And when he doesn't get information, he starts to like destroy the place. He sets fires. He starts shooting his gun off. He beats people up. It's just an ugly, 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 ugly movie. And, 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 and when it was on cable a couple weeks ago, I watched it like half an hour of it. It's even worse than I remember. It's horrible. Next on my list is The Rock. The Rock came out in 1996. This was Michael Bay's second film. And believe me, Michael Bay is the worst director ever right now. For me, the worst. Uh, he is so bad. His whole style is just like hammering into you. You need to feel sad right now. You need to feel excited right now. Here's the part where you feel patriotic. It's the music, it's the camera work, it's the editing, it's, it's everything. Everything about it just is like so insistent that you feel and think a certain way about everything that's happening at every single moment. And I hate that. I, he's a terrible director, but The Rock is actually a well-liked movie. And it's, it's like the worst, okay? I, I don't know if it's worse than Transformers 2 or Bad Boys 2 or Pearl Harbor. They're all really bad, but this one's really bad. 
And finally, number one movie that I hate the most is Attack of the Clones, uh, the second of the three Star Wars prequels. And the reason why I don't like this movie is just because it's so mediocre. It is just so lifeless. There is no grace. There is no, there is no energy to this movie at all. They spent all their time on the on the effects and on the creatures, and none on the story or the dialogue or the script or the acting. Everyone is just like dead in this movie. Okay, the only fun part is the Yoda fight with with Christopher Lee at the end. It's like you know a, a slight relief from all the mediocrity that's come before it. The only reason those movies made so much money is because they have Star Wars in the title, and and it, I can't even sit through that movie. I mean, it's just so bad. <sighs> Phantom Menace had a couple of interesting touches in it. Attack of the Clones, I, I thought there would be an improvement. I thought he'd get better, but he didn't. It's horrible. Anyway, my 10 least favorite movies of all time. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.